What's going on everybody? Justin here. The Winds of Change is the channel name. Thank you for stopping by. Today, I want to talk a little bit about IP claims. There's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of um, horror stories and everything like that involved with IP claims. Some people even asked me on my channel in the comments, hey, what do you mean uh, by an IP claim? So let's set the record straight. Let's get into it, see what it is and um, how you can avoid them and also what to do if you get one. So first of all, there are two types of IP complaints. IP complaint is short for intellectual property complaint. So if you see the acronym or the, or the initial um, IP, that is meaning intellectual property. And the first one that we want to talk about is a suspected IP claim, a suspected intellectual property claim. Now, these are something that Amazon issues uh, on a product that you may be selling that they have a high rate of complaints from the uh, the brand about or the brand's legal team or something they think that may be um, you know going to cause a conflict and Amazon will flag that and they'll send you a uh, an email and they'll notify you through Seller Central and they'll say suspected IP claim and they will tell you this does not go against your account this does not hurt your seller metrics. Um, in the same way that uh, an actual complaint does. So it doesn't affect your, your seller status at all, the suspected intellectual property complaints, but you do want to address them. So you want to address it uh, just like you would a regular IP complaint, which we will uh, we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, the second one and the most important one is an actual IP complaint, an actual a complaint from the brand or the brand's legal team that is telling Amazon, hey, this person can't be selling this stuff on your platform. They don't have permission to do it. Now, this is different than a cease and desist letter. We're not going to talk about cease and desist um, in this video. This is the company or the legal team getting hold of Amazon saying the seller can't sell this certain ASIN or the seller can't sell our brand at all. They don't have the rights to do it. Stop them. So Amazon will take that listing down just like they do in a suspected claim. And then you'll have to prove that you have permission to sell uh, that product in new condition, right? This is mainly affecting items sold as new because uh, say you're a brand owner, right? So you're a brand owner, you create a product and you're selling it and you're pushing it. All right. Uh, and then, all of a sudden, somebody you never hear of comes along, and now they're selling your stuff, maybe even at a lower rate than what you're selling it for. What's that going to do to your brand? Are you going to be happy about that? I'm not going to be happy about that. So I'm going to file an IP complaint. Yes, if I'm the brand owner and you are selling my stuff, I'll probably, fi I'll probably file one against you, right? So that's sort of how it goes. So put yourself in their shoes a little bit. There's a lot of like first doctrine arguments and that kind of stuff, but just try to understand for one, where the brand is coming from, right? Have a little bit of understanding. So that's, um, you know, mainly the, the, the drive behind it, what it is. They don't want either you misrepresenting their brand or driving the prices down or devaluing it or something like that. So there's probably a, a million other reasons why brands do it, but they do it. You sort of wish that they would just shut it down and not let you list it and restrict it instead of letting you list it and then dinging you with an IP complaint later, but that's not always the case. So let's take a look at Amazon and see uh, the three main types right from their website. So this is the Amazon website right here uh, from Seller Central, and it goes through, and you can look at this on your own. I just Googled um, IP complaint uh, Amazon. So we're going to look right here. There are three main types of IP rights, right? Copyrights, trademarks, and patents. And then if you ever get one, uh, it talks about how to address it down here. Invoices, uh, proving the authenticity, Amazon order IDs, uh, authorization from rights of the owner, court order saying that you can do it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but these are the three main ones, copyright, trademarks, patents. And then these are types of notices or warnings you can go on through down here. So Amazon does give you a little bit of a direction on how to handle these things and what not to do. So ultimately, IP complaints can shut your account down, right? Uh, that is one uh, possible scenario. You sell something, 
somebody says you're not supposed to be doing it, Amazon shuts you down. But the reality is that is a risk with literally everything. I've never had Amazon contact me about something I've done wrong and not threaten to shut my account down. I mean, even if I send in, say I send in five of an item and I only said I sent in four, they'll send me a letter and says, hey, you messed up on this. If it continues, we'll shut your account down, right? That's like their, that's like their blanket thing. Now that doesn't mean this isn't to be taken serious. You need to do everything you can to not get an IP complaint. The, the tricky part about that is, is the only surefire way to not get an IP complaint is to be the brand owner or to have a relationship with the brand itself um, or a distributor. Distributors are pretty safe, but even if you're buying through a distributor, the brand could still come down and target you and say that they don't want you selling it. Uh, typically, that goes down to the distributor before it ever get to you, but surefire, work with the brand or be the brand owner. Those are the only ways. So if you're doing retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, and you're reselling things as new, you run the risk of getting, getting an IP complaint. You just do, it's just how it is. And you need to be taken serious, but you need to understand that you cannot always avoid it. I've been selling on Amazon through FBA since 2012. That's 10 years, a little bit over. And uh, I think I've gotten five or six IP complaints. And they've been from brands who like, I've never heard of before, really, like little kids games or something like that. And um, I'll address it. Um, I'll try to provide the most information I can, even if it's not going to work. If they ask for invoices, I'll send them a receipt, right? Just to try to get that cleared off. Um, so just remember, you do you do run that risk. Now, you can sort of pick out maybe some items that aren't going to be the best to send in. Like if you're planning on sending in an item and the only other seller on there is the brand owner, I probably wouldn't send that item in or try to sell that on Amazon because you're going to be competing against the brand owner. And just like we talked about earlier, that brand owner may not like that and they may issue a complaint. Or if you're looking at a keeper graph and you see a whole bunch of sellers and a whole bunch of sales, then all of a sudden it just drops down to one seller. Probably an IP complaint came in and, and everybody um, had to get off of that listing. So there's some things you can do to, to mitigate the risk, right? But realistically, uh, it, it's out there. Okay, so you get an IP complaint. What do you do? Well, you comply. Um, if you just have like one of an item or two of an item every now and again, I, I would just remove it altogether. That, that's what I've personally done. I've got a complaint on something that I've sold for the first time. I sent in like two or three items and I just removed them all. It's, it's not worth the hassle. I'll just get rid of all of them. Um, so Amazon will, uh, they'll delist it, right? But I just remove them out from my inventory all the way. And then I try to provide them the documentation that they ask for, if I have it. So receipts I'll send in may not always work. Um, invoices, pictures of the item if you have it, anything that you have to try to say, hey, you know, um, I got this in a legitimate source, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of times that'll work if it's an inauthenticity claim, but for an IP claim, um, they're really looking for normally something a little bit different than that. They want something from the brand that says, yeah, we gave this guy the okay to, to sell it. And if you have a Walmart receipt, that doesn't always cut it, depending on the claim. Um, so you want to comply, you want to get rid of it. And uh, yeah, that's it. If you have a bunch of the items, like say you've been selling these for a while and you know, you're know you doing good on them, then you may want to actually just reach out to the brand, reach out to, their, to the brand and find out who you need to talk to and say, hey, you know what? Um, I've been selling these things. Um, this is what's going on. Got this letter. I'm interested in maybe setting up a wholesale counter. Is there anything we can do to sort of work it out or find a distributor or something like that? So if you're making a lot of money on it, it may be worth fighting for, but if it's only a couple things, I would just cut your losses and move on. There's so much uh, other stuff out there. If for some reason you don't have anything um, and you don't want to do any of those, uh, you can you can ignore it. If you choose to do so, you can ignore it. And I've personally uh, ignored some, removed the listings, and then just uh, ignored the, the claim. It stays on there. And I believe it's 180 days that will fall off. They'll eventually fall off um, of your account, right? So I've never had more than like two at a time. And um, I've, I've just let them fall off if I didn't have the documentation. So um, unless you can prove it, then you're, you're really, that's where you're at. You're at a, a contact the brand or stop selling it uh, kind of thing. And even if you provide the documentation saying that it was authentic or whatever, you may lose the claim 
um, but still not be able to sell that sell that product. So that's the gist of what IP claims are. So if you ever hear me or anybody else talking about IP claims, that's something you send into Amazon or you're selling on Amazon and the brand is saying, whoa, 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 you're not allowed to do this. We're going to tell Amazon. And then Amazon's going to say, hey, you can't do this unless you provide X, Y, and Z. So that's what it is. They're not good. They can hurt your account. However, they are not 100% avoidable unless, like I said, you are the brand or you are working directly with the brand. So keep doing what you're doing, right? Do the best you can to mitigate the risk. Don't buy, you know, 100 of an item that the only other seller is the brand. You know, do uh, your due diligence and study the product if you're going to go in deep and handle things as they come up. And I mean, that's really the best advice uh, I, I can give you, you know. Don't be afraid. Don't let it stop you from selling. Be wise about it. And uh, there's a lot of money to go around and be made for everybody. So thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate all the subscribers, all the comments, um, and all the participation uh, with the channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Take it easy. And until next time, I'll catch you all later.